Everybody wants love. Hey, what's up, yo? I want to speak about a classic story, man, that a lot of my friends, that my friends love to hear this story. Um, it happened in 2012. At this point in time, my, my girl and I were broken up. You know, I've you know, been with the same girl for a long time. But like I said, we had issues because she's all, she, she was pursuing, at that time in 2012, she was going through all the schooling to become a veterinarian. She was doing her undergraduate degree at that point. Yeah, so she was pursuing her undergraduate degree. She was in North Carolina. We broke up for like two years. So from 2012 to 2013, I was a single man. Then we reunited and uh, like later on in 2013. And, uh, we, you know, so. So, yeah, man, this is when this story occurred. All right. So, you know, I'm 21 years old. My homeboy has an apartment in, da in the downtown area. He has a nice apartment. You know, you need a code to get into the building. You know, when when, I, when you step outside, all you see is uh, bars. So it was it was the perfect place for a 21 year old like myself. Just broke up with my girlfriend, and um, yeah, man, we were selling weed and getting drunk every night. You know, I, I I you know I didn't live there. I didn't you know, but I liked the area because it was uh, downtown. I mean, at 21 years old, if one of your friends gets an apartment right in the heart of downtown where all the bars are and all the activity is, you're gonna be excited to go hang out over there, and that became the spot, the headquarters. Now, um, one night, just like any other night, hey, we're very, we patronize all the bars in the area and all the restaurants because each day, each day there's a different deal. Um, I think on Monday, we went to this hot dog spot because they had chili hot dogs and fries. It was like a dollar, dollar hot dog day. And then on Tuesday, we went to Buffalo Wild Wings because they had like 50 cent wings and discounts on beer. Wednesday we went to this other place that had dollar drinks. So every day it was like a, a different spot that we would go to in the in the neighborhood downtown by the apartment. And one particular night, man, we went to a bar and I was feeling good that I had sold some weed and um I sold a lot of weed that particular day, so I had more money on me than usual. So I would say I had about $300 on me. Usually the money that I, I it, it, well yeah, yeah, let's just say I had $300, made 300 bucks off one sale. You know, I, I sold, I sold, I, I hit a lick and I had three hundred dollars. So I was in a good mood. I felt good about myself. Um, I'm buying the homies Corona beers and stuff like that. It's a real small room, small, small bar room, about the size of a bedroom. You know, and I see this light skinned chick just staring at me. Right now, I'm a light skinned guy. So I've been attracted to light skinned women. You know, to be honest with you, because I'm light skinned. You know, so it's always been weird to me to be with a to be with a light skinned girl. Right. So this light-skinned girl keeps looking. I'm drunk, though. You know, I was real drunk. Because we would get drunk in the apartment, and then we would leave and go walk to one of these bars and get even more drunk. So it was a big group of us, man. It was about 10 of us. It was about a couple, few females because uh, we had. there were some females who lived in an apartment building. We had a platonic relationship with them. They would come drink with us, you know. So, yeah, man. You know, this, this chick is, is just staring at me, you know. And as we're about to go, I'm like, yo, I don't know, I don't remember exactly what I said, but I'm like, yo, take my, I think, I either gave her my number, because back then I think that's what I used to do, I think, I've all anytime, I always give my number to the female, so I'm pretty sure I gave her my number. So, we leave, we leave the bar, right, and then we go back to the apartment, alright, so I didn't drive, my homeboy drove, so I'm ready to go back home, right? So my homeboy actually, my homeboy actually um, takes me home. He takes me home, and and it's about three, four in the morning. And on the route home, like five minutes into being on the highway, I get a text message, right? And I'm like, oh shit, who is this? And it was the girl from the bar. And I was like, yo, I said, let me come through. I remember texting, let me come through. I didn't. I'm drunk. I'm half unconscious i'm in the passenger seat just texting and then i get a text back like all right this is the address and i'm like holy shit and i say yo let's go drop me off here right so my homeboy was like all right that's what's up he's half drunk and he's you know excited and um so we so he she's like yeah i'm gonna take you there so we get so as we're getting into her neighborhood he starts hating on me. He starts getting upset because it's obvious that this is a nice, rich neighborhood. I mean, these hot, big mansions, big, 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 huge homes. 
And I'm like, whoa. And I'm like, yo, this is the house right here. And I was like, yo, this is what we're going to do. I don't even, see, mind you, I didn't even remember. I didn't even really know who I was talking to. I just text, let me come through. I didn't put two and two together that this is the girl from the bar. I'm drunk. I'm not really in my right. I don't even remember how she looked. I'm just doing all of this spur of the moment, right? My homeboy is hating on me. I'm telling him, I'm like, yo, don't leave me. I'm like, yo, my phone is about to die. So I'm going to go knock on the door. I'm going to see how she looks. And if she's all right, I'm going to stay. But if she don't look, I'm coming back. That's how I, and I, and I don't, you know, I don't mean any offense to any women out there or anything like that. But that's just how I was rocking at that point. And um, he was like, all right. So I go up to the doorstep. Knock on the door, ring the doorbell, and then he skirts off, right? <laughs> and then my phone died. My phone literally dies as soon as I see it off. And I'm like, fuck. Then she opens the door, and I see it's a cute light skin girl. And I'm like, oh, shit. All right, I'm good. So I come in to the uh, to the home. It's a big, huge house. We kick it. You know, we smoke some weed, you know, talk. And then I'm drunk, I'm like and, uh, unconscious, barely even, I don't even know how I was able to even muster the energy to hang out with her. But we go up to her room and, you know, long story short, short story shorter, it, it is what it is, man. You know, we did what we did. But then when I woke up the next morning, right, to use the bathroom, I, 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 I'm not familiar with the house or anything like that. It's a huge house. And uh, I stumble around and I end up in a room, right, like a master bedroom. And I notice a big portrait, and there's a, and it's a portrait of a judge wearing his judge clothes. And I'm like, that's Judge Hughes. <laughs> I knew who he was, man. I never had the judge or anything like that. I just, I was aware of who he was. And, uh, because he had a reputation, you know, Judge Hughes. And I'm like, hold on. I said, that's you? I said, who is that? She said, that's my dad. And I said, oh, my God. But long story short, short story shorter, I... She drops me off at the house. And then the next time I kick it with her, we actually got into it because I was texting my homeboy. I was like, yo, this chick got a mansion. This chick doing, you know, man, she let me, yo, she, she rocking with me. I got her. I got her. I got her. I got her, man. I think, I think I got her. And she seen my phone, right? So the second time I'm kicking it with her, I come to her house and I'm texting my friend, letting them know like, yo, this chick look good and I think I got her. So when I go to use the bathroom, she, she reads my text messages, right? And she sees that I'm talking about her to my friend. And when I pick up my phone, I can see, she actually typed on the keyboard, but she didn't submit the message. It was a way to send an indirect, she was trying to send an indirect message to me because she knew when I picked up the phone, I would see the typed message. You know, like she was texting my friend, but never sent it. But really, the message was for me. And it said, you stupid motherfucker, get out of my house. I looked at it, and I looked at her, and I'm like, why you look read my why why did you why you read my like my text messages man that's that you you've invaded my privacy you know and she kicked me out the house and I'm like I don't even know where I'm at I'm not familiar with this area I li I live like two hours like an hour and a half away you really gonna kick me out and she's like yeah and I'm like look man take me to the gas station around the corner I'll get a ride and she said all right so she begrudgingly took me to the gas station, dropped me off. I had a six-pack of Heineken with me. <laughs> and, you know, that, and, and I learned my lesson, man, because back then I had my own vehicle, but, you know, people would pick me up, and I didn't mind. But after this experience, I learned, man, I don't ever want to be without my own vehicle. That way I can just leave when I want to leave. So I had a six-pack of Heineken. I'm at this gas station. She left. My homeboy comes, right? But since I did what I did, when I first met her, I broke her off. I ain't going to lie, man. I did it. I rocked her world, bro. I was off perks that night. Percocets, you know, when you take perks, you, you can't ejaculate. So I had, so like when I had sex with her, man, it was really like that. So eventually, like a week later, she hit me up and was like, hey, I'm sorry, I miss you. And I'm like, oh, it's all good. So, I mean, so we're, this casual French sexual, this casual sexual relationship was starting to develop, right? So she would come to my apartment and bring me food and kick it with me and we'll have sex and smoke weed and then it's and then like some and, and it, was, it was never no string it was no strings attached we never even had a discussion about what we were we never had a discussion about what the future would bring we just would kick it with each other smoke weed and have sex and she would like bring food to me and stuff like that right and then it got to a point where um one day I, the last time i seen her i was at her home right 
the last time I seen her on the streets, I was at her home, and we was about to have sex one night, and she said, this is the last time we're going to, after we've had sex, she was like, this is the last time, I said, last time what, she says, this is the last time you're going to be able to kick it with me, I said, what, and she said, I can't, I can't rock with you no more, because I got a boyfriend, I said, what, and she was like, you don't mind though, right, we, we don't, we, we, we don't even have a title, we just met and just kicked it, and I'm like, true, true, and we had this understanding with each other, man, but, so long story short, after that, I got locked up for selling weed, and caught my distribution of marijuana charge in 2012, right, and guess who comes to see me, I get a visit one day, it's her, the judge's daughter, and I'm like, what, what you doing here, girl, you, you know, then her father, somehow her father found out about me, found out that she was visiting me and stuff like that. It was crazy, man. But it it was just a crazy thing, man, because she would come with me. Like, I'd be like, yo, I'm about to go. To, I, I need to go to the mall. I need to buy a new sweater or a new shirt. She'd be like, all right, I'll come. And we in the mall kicking it. People would see us together and they would think that we were a couple, but we weren't. I met her at the bar that night. I came to her house. That night, the same day, I, the night I met her, I went to her house and spent the night, had sex. I would never do that again, because like I said, man, I was a young man at the time. Now, I wouldn't do that, because you don't know what diseases are out there, but I didn't care at that point. I was drunk, you know, and um, we became cool with each other, man, and she was a really good chick. They also had a farm, a farmhouse. We would go to the farmhouse and ride ATVs. Her, her father, he knew me, her mother, they never actually, like... Ask me, hey, are you dating my daughter? Or nothing. They never asked, man. And they and, and they had two homes. They had a farmhouse and they had the regular house where I first went went to when I first met her. I would be at that. I was kicking it with her like every night. That was like my house. They would never be there. They would be at the farmhouse. But you know, it was just a weird experience, man, because it taught me that the freak. And all her friends were like, like one of her friends was the daughter of a very famous news person that works for the local news. One of her friends is the, is the, is the daughter of another is the daughter of another big time judge. So all her friends are like they they were like privileged rich people that were kind of semi famous in our city, right? Privi the privileged people. And they were all freaky too. All the all her friends, the female friends that she had were freaky. I mean, and she was a sexy light skinned girl, man. Sexy, but she was a straight up freak. No, I ain't gonna lie. But yeah, man, the judge's daughter, man. Crazy story. Peace.